Hey guys, welcome to my house. Come in the red door, show you around my flats. Come in. So this is where I spend most of my days and afternoons as well. I have my piano down here, TV with PlayStation, we're spending quite a lot of time playing was on during the whole lockdown situation. And the whole kitchen, you're always gonna find some pasta stuff in here because you know what I mean, Italian style. I definitely comes from like a songwriting rock background and uh, I later on started to discover blues music as well and uh, just fell in love with uh, all the guys from the 60s, the 50s, all the way back to the 40s and 30s in Mississippi. Clearly I don't have like an ergonomic chair or anything like that, but I mean, it's easier if you want to take like a mid-afternoon nap. So basically when the whole COVID situation came in England and happened, uh, I just literally left my job in order to bask full time in central London. Um, that was what you would call like a really bad timing. Uh, I left my job in February and March, every, or the whole nation went into lockdown. So that was a little bit tough to be honest. Yeah, I moved to London five years ago. Um, it's been quite a journey so far, but I love the city. I love the environment and I love the music scene as well. Spending a lot of time here with my best friends. We were friends since we were five years old, so that's been pretty easy, honestly. But, uh, coexisting together and don't see anyone else for two months more or less because it gave me a lot of time to focus on my writing, my composition and that's where I found most of myself, like I had time to think about myself as well and uh, collect thoughts and organize everything in order to just um, compose all the songs for the album mainly. It is my bedroom, it's a little bit messy at the moment but this is where I create more, most of my music as well. This one is like a Stella from 1965. I bought it on the internet from a guy from Glasgow, actually. Um, I was just looking for a guitar to play some blues and keeping an open G tuning. And uh, this just like sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. Jewel of the collection. It's definitely my Telecaster. It's like an American Telecaster. Um, I bought this one when I was around 18, 19 years old. And it's, always, and it's been with me ever since. I haven't changed a thing. I just changed, just like colors here, but everything else, honestly, just like how it's, it came out of fabric. This one, it's a Seagull, which is a Canadian guitar brand. Um, this one is pretty cool. It's like my acoustic to recording studio, or like when I go busking as well, I use, always use this one. It's a pretty nice sound, it's quite woody as well. But the toughest, period definitely has been like the first two three months for me where everything was really uncertain and um, news from Italy as well like where my family lives were actually quite disturbing in a way numbers were uh, really scary down there and um, it happened around March last year then uh, my dad got COVID as well and uh, he ended up just like uh, by himself in the flat and in, in his own flat and um, the only chance that I had to get in touch with him was just like by phone but it wasn't really in the best shape possible so it's just like being tough days uh, to fill the distance to home and not being able to be there and support uh, I guess like the family in this in, the, in that moments and uh, have the feeling that my dad as well was going through that alone uh, without feeling good at all uh, thanks God he never ended up in hospital or anything. I record everything with GarageBand on my iPad actually. Uh, I have a Focusrite as an um, interface. And to record usually I have like a couple of mix, which guys I'm going to show you. I have this one which usually I use for vocals or um, recording some acoustic guitars as well. I like to dress the way I do and uh, I'm happy in it. Uh, but um, it just comes uh, together with my music uh, to connect like my music with my whole fashion as well. 
I really, I just generally really like the whole um, vintage look and uh, Rocky style, chains, accessories and everything like that. Uh, yeah, I went to uni for three years studying economics and finance. Then to just realize it wasn't really the right things for me, I guess. Uh, the just the thought to just like being stuck in a bank and everything wasn't really my, or, or even like in a company, in an office job, it wasn't really my uh, dream. And uh, it came clear and clear while working, mainly when I moved to here, working like in pubs and restaurants and stuff like that, or like even clothes shop, that it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I felt like I was just meant to do music and uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of, like difficult job, diff difficult journey, I guess, like to just understand that yeah, you can make a living out of playing music. Uh, but um, yeah, so far it went pretty good, and just like this is just the beginning, so I'm, it's okay. to the studio to meet a couple friends of mine and we're going to the studio in Arrow London North London to see a couple friends of mine Marco is the producer Alessandro plays the drum it then happened that during lockdown, I felt it was the right time for me to record my own music, so I started doing some pre-production on some of my tunes. Lately, I met a couple of fellow musicians called the Cinelli Brothers, which agreed to help me out in recording and producing my music. Oh, I'm playing my guitar on. I'm my guitar. Play my guitar. Look who is there. Hello, man. Hello, hello. Pretty good yourself? Yeah, good. <laughs> man, you've done some work in here. Looks, yeah. It looks cool, like that. Yeah. Looks really nice. Maybe we were thinking about calling in the Mad Hatter studio. Okay. <laughs> that, makes sense. that makes sense, actually. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Ah, fuck, man. It's true. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, uh, uh. What do you have there, like spinach? I have in the first row, I have spinach, then I have, I just label it, you see spinach, then I have lettuce, lettuce okay. and then I have um, rad, radish again. Okay, so yeah. sweet man. I'm but more an album guy in the EPs, but... I, I understand, but because I have no one listening yeah, to you right no, exactly. now, so I think like when I'm coming out with like the debut, the debut album is going to be then the next step, so like my first album like as an artist, going yeah. you know, with, my, with my project, whatever, it came out like in that way. I hope you have ten albums, good albums. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. you will. Yeah. Some, yeah something will. Turn, yeah. You know? So something will come. I also cover. believe that you don't have to just do single, single, single. Yeah. No. Definitely. Definitely. No. So work because if you have ten good records out there, every year one record that will in, in ten years your something's gonna come up. Hopefully. Of, no, no, of, yeah. This is the set for the video of the Dandy Man. Yeah. Man, it looked a little bit different then, but. Piano is still there at least and everything, looks really cool. I repeat myself, but I feel a little bit nostalgic coming back here after like I spent two months like day by day like recording. A lot of these things we used for your record, right? Yeah, remember yeah. Remember this amp? Yeah. This is the Flexi amp, the Defender. You remember how crazy it was to find the perfect sound? Yes, the... it was, it was. I didn't get to involve in that, thanks God, but like you took care of it. So thank you, thank you very much for it. Thank you very much for doing this. I never had the opportunity to fully express myself as a producer um, through rock music like someone else's rock music. This record was entirely digital, entirely home cooked. It was in my living room. We had to invent a sound, basically. We have to invent a sound. 
for us, the challenge was to make it sound great uh, with the gear we had, which is not, uh, you know, extremely expensive stuff. We worked on placing the microphones in the right position, the right tuning, and a bit of luck sometimes maybe, but I think we ended up there. I'm very happy with the result. The way um, that I process the whole idea of the songs of the album as well, uh, it's that there are clearly two different soul in between, uh, inside the 10 songs that I recorded. Five of the songs are clearly from like a time where I was definitely in a better place. Three years like uh, after I came to London, it was easier for me to just like move around and just feel better in general, like in my life. Uh, you can feel it more in um, what is the first EP, which is Dichotomy. It's, it's just like a more rock, like happy, feel good feeling that I have in those five songs. While in the second EP, Dichotomy 2, you can clearly feel the, uh, I think like more of the struggle, especially in the song in Tangerine, it's, it's, it's a clear statement to my own creativity to don't let me go in periods where actually like I felt that there would have been no future for me like in uh, making music. I don't believe too much in messages behind music and I really don't believe in uh, giving like, um, giving my own meaning, like they barely have a meaning for me, for me, the songs that I compose to be honest. I, uh, I don't really want to uh, tell people what to feel with my music, I prefer to them to feel whatever, the, whatever the, they, they, they feel like. Satisfied with myself, I'm really happy with the guys, I'm really happy with everything that I learned, I'm uh, happy about the um, arrangements, how the songs sound and uh, the kind of feeling that they push out. Um, and uh, honestly, like, always aiming to better and better and better. As hard as it can be, just like to fucking believe in yourself. And uh, I'm slowly learning myself that like, working hard pays off. Like, or even if it doesn't pay off the way you imagine it, but just anyway, just like it puts you like on the right path uh, where you want to go, honestly. And that's better than living a life of regrets. So I guess like, if there's one thing that you, people, I hope take out of this album, is just like, do whatever the fuck they want with their life. I'm yours, Luke Tanner, and today we are in central London, England. We're gonna go in Leicester Square to do some busking, get some people dancing, and just try to make some money as well. Let's see how it goes. Come with me then. Leicester Square now is here, right? We're on Chando's place. I cleaned, I cleaned the fretboards with like some lemon, like water with lemon juice inside. And now it's just like, it's fading the color. So I don't know if it's, I've done the right thing, but. I played blues and country songs and rock songs from the 60s, 70s and stuff like that. But I pick and choose songs that I know that uh, the crowd might like and enjoy it. So I don't push myself in playing some Coldplay or Head Shear and stuff like that, even though I probably people will really like. All right, guys, the busking spot is free, so just follow me up. We're gonna set it up and start playing in Leicester Square. Right 
good. I need people aware that I'm going to start me playing. Basically, what we have is mixer, extension power, an inverter, and a battery. So this is like the crucial part of it. All right, so I set the amp just beside the mixer. I plug the inverter into the battery, and then I put extension cable inside the inverter, and there will be lights. Yes, everything is working fine. And then you just start connecting with all the cables for guitar. Hopefully we're not gonna have too many weirdos just going around. In here you have a uh, license and they allow just like you to do 45 minute sets. I just let you know that the uh, city inspectors they are around, so that if, if this, you applied for the license. I oh, yeah, have a license, yeah, yeah, yeah so it's all good. There normally has to be displayed. So uh, I mean, we don't really bother. No, 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 I mean like it needs to be displayed right, just like I have I, 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 I printed it, I left it on, but like I have it on my, I have it on my phone, you know, so, you know, the email. So, so right. Okay, cool, man. Take care. Enjoy the day. Thank you, buddy. And you do the same. All right. Dun, 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 dun. A little bit more vocals. The train are coming and strolling down the bend And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when Well, I'm stuck in full sun freezing And time keeps dragging on Yeah, man. Yeah, I think that's the first time when I met When I met up for the first time, they played that. Like, like they played that one? Yeah, yeah, I think that's... And they were all smiling because they could play together. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice, really nice to know, to be yeah, honest. That's good to know. Thanks, buddy. Thank you very much. But generally speaking, something we miss now a little bit is uh, tourists, to be honest. Like, you know, when you have, like, especially American tips very really well. American tips very really well, usually. Or otherwise, some other tips well as well. It's just like people that want you to perform or sing a specific song. They feel like they're asking you a favor, therefore they're willing to just like, oh, I'll give you five, ten pounds if you do it. It's like, I do whatever you want for five, ten pounds. That's the thing. <laughs> well, I'm glad of some rich folks sitting in some fancy dining car, probably drinking coffee. And, uh, we had a group of girls, like a couple of girls, just, like passed through and just like left a fiver, six pound actually, which is. Is the pint is, is the money for the pint for later, which is not bad. Great day today. It was a great day. Really good set. People enjoyed it. I think people really missed music. Therefore, it's great to, for me as well to perform in central London. I had some people coming over saying like, I like your voice and stuff like that. So, enjoy them. Stay with me and keep your hell around I'm definitely looking at the future with a lot of optimism and, uh, and I'm really happy and uh, looking forward to see what's going to be what's going to be of myself in two, three, four, five years. I mean, actually even looking forward to see what's going to be of myself in 60 years. And you've been strolling around, you've strolling around night. My advice is to keep on going, believe in yourself, do things your way, that everything is achievable, just like keep on pushing, man. 
Well, I guess in 60 years, it's just like to look back and be like, uh, it's been a hell of a ride. To not have many regrets. I wish for myself to not have many regrets and to have lived and fulfilled in the limits their lives give to my dreams. Yeah, that's it. That's what it is. All good? All good.